Welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. So most times the interviews are pretty serious. Today is going to be ridiculous because besides me being ridiculous normally, I got two guys sitting next to me that are really more, more ridiculous than I am, okay? And their story is really going to kind of hit home for a lot of you guys. I could just sit here and let them do whatever they do, okay? Because when you are a baby or a kid, and you say, everybody asks what you want to do when you grow up. When it comes to boys, firemen, policemen, these two come up with, to, to their families, I want to be a clown. <laughs> okay, and they haven't changed all these years. Next to, next to me is Steve Combs, and next to him is Ryan Copeland. Close, close, close. close. Yeah. But uh, at least you got our first names right. We've worked with people for years that can't tell us apart. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Copeland is your Copeland. Copeland, yep. I'm yeah. Copeland. Copeland. And I'm Ryan Gomes. And he's I see, now I would normally like edit this, but I'm allowed at this interview to be stupid. Okay? <laughs> we Cause, prefer it. Because <laughs> look, look who he's sitting next to. Yeah. I mean, okay. Come on. The only thing that could have been worse than this interview is if their outfits were green. <laughs> okay? Then we'd be able to look right through you. Okay. So you guys are doing Cirque Alcatraz. That's correct. That's right. I got that one right? That, yep. You got that Cirque right. Cirque Alcatraz. That's right. One for me. We escaped for a couple <laughs> hours so we could come do an interview with you. Okay. There are so many different Cirque products, <coughs> and Cirque Italia is putting on Cirque Alcatraz. That's right. And they have how many different kind of shows? We are one of four shows. But we don't that, care about the other shows. That's yeah. right. Please. Okay? Yes. You're not in any other damn shows. Right. Mm. So forget it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, this is the important an, one. Uh, Cirque Alcatraz is an adult theme show. So this one, you're probably going to leave the kids at home and That's half my audience I should leave at home. So <laughs> okay, you, you said it's for adults. Okay. Unless you want to scar your children and they grow up to be like us. <laughs> and I don't think anybody wants that. Okay, so <coughs> Cirque Alcatraz, mm -hmm. what's it about? Cirque Alcatraz. Oh, I thought you never <laughs> asked. <laughs> Cirque okay. Alcatraz follows the delightful story of Steve and Ryan, two hapless uh, miscreants who find their way into Alcatraz prison. The world's Wrong most dangerous prison. Yeah. Um, wrongfully accused of murder. You follow our story through, um, through uh, let's see, Musical numbers. We do original musical numbers mm -hmm. and uh, and you know comedy scenes and tell a story, uh, dodging evil guards and dangerous prisoners and also gorgeous guards. Yeah. Look really nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but, but we're not the only people in the show. Yeah, you know, but I don't care about We, we like to think you that guys we're the, are here. You, know. you to me, you guys are the stars of the show. Oh, you guys are here. You and my mom think that. <laughs> yeah, I'm banging on the table. Yeah, that's I get right. banging <laughs> on the table. I put my hand down. That's the difference. But okay, so I have to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's why they. Hand how do us. you find out? Like, you guys are like sitting at your houses and go, "Oh, look." A new Cirque product. I want to go be in it. How did you find out that they well, were having it? Well, when, we uh, when we were young and we were circus clowns, our mothers, rather than tell their friends that we were circus clowns, they'd say we were in prison anyway. <laughs> so we figured, hey, here's a way we can actually fulfill everyone's expectations of our future. But it you've done more than that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I would like to piggyback on his comment okay. real quick, though. Um, kind of like you do with all of our career. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At Cirque Alcatraz, like Ryan said, it is an adult show, and there is harsh language used. So I think it's cool that after 20 years in the circus business, I can finally tell people what's on my mind. I can say <laughs> the things that I feel so strongly inside with the language I see fit. Well, being a clown... Mm -hmm. Does it, it leaves a lot of people speechless. Does it carry, yeah, over, right. me, does it carry over to your personal life? Absolutely. Yeah, I've um, ruined a lot our, of first dates with a seltzer bottle or a pie <laughs> in the face. I Women think it's don't like differently. That. Our personal lives carry over into our into our work. That's why we do what we do. I think it's it's not it's not very separate at all. Uh, what we do in the ring in front of people is just an extension of our uh, our personalities. So, if you've ever seen a Cirque product, <coughs> there there's a lot of components in a Cirque product. Yes. And some of them are similar. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of acrobatics in Cirque products. Yeah, we, in uh, in our in our show, we have people walking upside down by their ankles over the crowd. We have people walking on a wire. We have people hanging from 
uh, from fabric that's hanging from the ceiling and swinging around out over the audience. But we also have dancers and we have uh, a guy that shoots a crossbow at his wife. Yeah, we think that that's a new uh, popular discourse for husbands and wives to work out their problems. Just pick up a crossbow. So you have to you replace know? them constantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we go through more wives that way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you the segment that you guys take mm -hmm. is... Hey, this show's got all these talented people, and we're going to make everybody else laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's is right. that, is that well, it? we uh, when they pitched the idea to us of this adult-themed prison show, and we were we needed characters to to fit in there, and so we thought, who are people like? What kind of material does not belong in this dark prison <laughs> setting? And we said Broadway musical numbers. Mm -hmm. And so and then, we decided to tell our story. So we wrote uh, original songs and music with our uh, our composer that we work with, and um, and got our story told uh, through musical numbers, which we thought was such a fun change from all this other, you know, heavy metal and hard rock yeah. and and just tough situation. And uh, Cirque Alcatraz is also very unique because. No one in America has ever seen a prison theme circus no. before. It's That's an interesting true. choice, but despite it being a very, you think it, you think dark, but w the bottom line that I've seen people take away is fun. People yeah. are screaming and cheering. We get multiple standing o ovations. No pressure to you guys that are yeah. coming out, by the way. But, okay, so I have to ask you this because we were talking in the green room and I said on my bucket list I wanted to get up and do... Two or three minutes of shtick comedy. Which you should do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only because you don't want to do be it right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll right now. Sure. You don't want to be the only one that had to suffer. <laughs> that's right. Okay, I get up there, no one's going to laugh, man. That's brutal. <laughs> that's how you learn. No, the, I don't want to learn. A juggler okay. can be locked in a, in a room for a year by himself with some juggling clubs and come out the best juggler in the world. I did magic. But a you did? Okay, yes. Yeah. But a comedian can't you know you can't lock a comedian away and have them come out any funnier after you you have to be in front of people okay so and you have to be locked in a closet I, I, i'd like to piggyback on that real quickly <laughs> i figured if i locked myself in a room with a piano i'd come out the world's greatest piano player but after a year of being locked in a room with my piano i'm legally married to the piano now in south carolina so <laughs> but that's normal in south carolina so it's okay well, that's true that. this okay. isn't going to be broadcast in south carolina no, right? oh no. thank god <laughs> Okay, so you do the you do the show because it's what you love. Is it the audience response that makes you continually want to do and act as ridiculous as you guys do? Absolutely, <laughs> and every audience. I, I mean, even even in the same town, every audience is different. So you have to adjust your material, your timing uh, for the crowd, and you're never a hundred percent. I'm never a hundred. Sometimes you do really well. But you're still like, oh, if I had held this longer, oh, next time let's say this or try it this way. It, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And in our show, we get to do verbal comedy. We're doing musical comedy and physical comedy where we're not talking at all. It's just we're triple threat. And slaps yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you this because you said something about <coughs> working with your composer and stuff. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the story? Fine. The storyline was written by Steve and I. Really? The, yeah. The um, oh my god, you guys yeah. are more intelligent than I thought you were. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. say it. I didn't think you. I do wear, wear glasses <laughs> after all. I got to be some kind of smart. <laughs> yeah. We uh, when when they pitched the idea to us, they had an idea of the story, and we thought, well, we don't really fit into that, but here's a way we do fit in. <laughs> yeah. And so we sat down. We took a couple months, and we wrote, uh, created these characters, wrote a storyline for them, how they go through uh, a prison. And wrote the musical numbers that that kind of told that story and came up with physical comedy acts that uh, that that also pushed the story forward. Okay, and it was a lot of fun. I've been in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. for twenty five years, and now you're disappointing me because I thought I was I was smarter like than family. you guys. It was, oh. <laughs> But you guys are We're, much smarter in the industry than I am. We're used to being to disappointing people. It's usually <laughs> not about our level of intelligence. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I was like, ah, these guys would be easy. They, mm -hmm. They're clowns. Little did I know that you wrote the story. Uh -huh. You helped write the music. Yep. This was actually. No, I'm um, jealous. We, <laughs> we've been we've been working with uh, with the composer for how would you say six seven six years. Six years, now? yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's been great because he's really become. Uh, the third member of our team, oh. and we uh, we we've collaborated before, and now each time we we work further with him, we we do more. So this is the the first time that we have a song in the in the show that I 
that I like did all the lyrics to. I mean, he, he'd tweak them and, and make them a little bit better here and there if there was something that was a little off that didn't fit with the rhythm. But it, it was, uh, it's really neat to have this idea in your head and then see it, you know, get fully orchestrated and, and, uh, and now we get to bring it to the people of Port St. Lucie. Because we, we opened people. the adult people, yeah. yeah. And, and the people kids. with bad judgment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Is it a, an adult show just because of the language? Um, there's some uh, there's some violence in the show. Okay. Suggestive people, themes. My people are looking for nudity. Really? Come on. Oh, okay. oh. No, not right, you guys. Oh, Sit sorry, down. sorry. The <laughs> most nudity you're going to get in the show is Steve. Uh, Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have world-class athletes in our show, and Steve right. and I have world-class dad bods. That's right. <laughs> that we have no problem showing right. every night. So, I got to believe that it's pretty taxing mm -hmm. to do this show. Are you... How many, you, how many shows do you do in a row before you get a break? So, um, here in Port St. Lucie, Stop we have... banging on the table. I'm he not banging! Like... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Every time he bangs, <sighs> yeah. you don't have to listen to him. That's, That's true. You can hear him, so That's don't true. worry about it. I'm going to keep my hands on my knees. <laughs> Port Saint, in Port St. Lucie, we have one show Thursday night, July, July 1st, 1st at 7.30. 7:30. We have a one show 7.30 on Friday. We have two shows on Saturday at 6.30 and 9.30. And then on Sunday, our last day in Port St. Lucie, also July 4th. Come out and celebrate your country's independence by being locked in jail with us. <laughs> uh, we have shows at 5.30 and 8.30 oh, on yeah, the 4th. Wow. Yep, two shows on Saturday and Sunday. And then you pack up. Then we're heading to West Palm Beach. Okay, so that's the 4th. Yes, and, and that's in Clover Park in Port St. Lucie. And then you open at West Palm Beach on the 8th? That's right. We'll be there at the Palm Beach Kennel Club uh, from the 8th to the 18th of July. Yeah. Oh, 10 days. Mm -hmm. But it's nice. Uh, if you come to the show about 40 minutes beforehand, uh, you can actually meet us. Come into the, the pre-show area. Meet and you, meet I already, <laughs> yeah. I'm stuck with you guys. But you're people. <laughs> yeah, but you, you can come guys. too. Yeah. Yeah. But I already stuck with them for like an hour or so. So yeah. it's okay. So... Come meet us before the show. You can take pictures with us, hang out a bit, bake us a cake with a file in mm -hmm. it. Ten days mm -hmm. in West Palm. That's right. Yes. Shows all ten days? Uh, we will or have a dark day. we will have a dark day the second week on the Tuesday. I'm not smart enough to know the date that's fine. right now. But Give yeah. our voices a rest. That's right. Give our, our voices and our that's stabbing really arms brutal. a rest. So <laughs> I have been to Cirque Products before. Mm -hmm. And you're right. If you get there early, you're getting 15% of entertainment because you guys are out. Sometimes you guys are out, and I don't know, because sometimes the guys are out in the f outside the tent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you guys are inside the tent. We'll be outside the Making, tent. We'll be inside, inside the, the tent. tent. They'd be annoying inside the tent running <laughs> around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I, I, that's, like, so cool. Your interaction with people. I'm going to guess, and I could be wrong, that... Better than 90%, it's positive for the people. Well, we don't like clowns and comedians that get someone out of the audience and then make fun of the person to make the audience laugh. Yeah. We want the audience to laugh at us and our shortcomings. Yeah. Okay. You know, we're not there to ha make anyone have a bad time. We want people to come to Cirque Alcatraz and leave having a completely positive and fun experience. Exactly. And I didn't touch the table once. That's, mm. that's true. You know, it's, it's interesting learning. because, again, speaking to him in the green room, I learned that like I said, this was a dream of yours to do. Yes. Maybe not a Cirque product back when you were three or four years old, mm -hmm. but to entertain people. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And we spent every spare moment we had as children trying to make people laugh. Every, you know, in school, I'd fall down the stairs, throw did my you? books, walk into lockers, did you, try and. Okay. So then, tell jokes. with that said, yeah. did you have a hard time in school? Because you were the class clown? I was, neither of us were the class clown. Mm -hmm. We were actually the opposite really? of the class clown. The, In class, I was probably the most quiet person there was, sitting there watching everyone else, right, <laughs> taking note of their, their personal tics and their personalities so that I could then make fun of them now when <laughs> I go play these characters. <laughs> I had asked you in the green room, <clears throat> did you get family support? And you, it was interesting because <clears throat> you're right. There really is no family support. How does a family support you when you say you want to be a clown? It's not like, all right, you know what? I want them to learn what this is, so I'm going to bring them to the circus every week. Right. Okay? Yeah, it's it's a different, uh, it's definitely a different thing. We, we come from very supportive families, but 
um, you have to understand from, from there, and it's got to be very hard to be supportive when you know nothing about what your child wants to do. You say, your kid says to you, I want to be a, a fireman. You can take them to the fire station, and people can talk to them about what it, what it means to be a, a fireman. But if you, you say, I want to be a clown, that's like saying, I want to be a unicorn. When mm-hmm. I grow up, there's no there's no way to help. I'm them getting out. the horn installed next week. Mom, uh, I think when I grow up, I want to be an idiot and make people laugh. <laughs> Let me think yeah. about it. And I, and I tell and the they story want of... the best for you. you yeah. know? they don't want. Yeah, you to, they like... they wanted us to go to college, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll go. like any parent. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't need that. And now, as I'm getting older and I'm starting to look at retirement options, I'm like, mm, college probably wouldn't have been that bad. <laughs> do do they come out and see your shows? Family. Yes, they, yes do. they do. They do. I remember one of the things my grandfather used to tell me is you you want to you want to go to college and get a good education so you have a job to fall back on. And I thought to myself, well, then I just won't fall back. I'll just keep <laughs> going forward. going forward. But what you don't take into account when you're six is that maybe at some point you'll find other interests that you'd like to pursue. Like right now, uh, I'm big into uh, hand drawn animation, and I I'm realizing that oh, if I had gone to art school then I would have a leg up on, on that. Okay. And we use a lot of art in our, in our job when we're explaining what we're going to be doing. Our show, we, we have sketches and renderings. That's and, so cool. And, stuff. and when we're building our own props, we have to know how to build these things and create illusions and, and See, whatnot. for me, who, who doesn't, I love to sing, mm-hmm. but God knows if I sing, everybody would walk away. <laughs> that hasn't stopped us. That hasn't <laughs> stopped us, absolutely. Okay, it's like, ah, karaoke. It's conviction. Hey, karaoke. <laughs> Listen to them saying they suck. <laughs> I should get up there. No, I'll suck worse. No, I, I can't. It's the same thing with dancing. My yeah. philosophy with dancing is if you are not the worst, everybody looks at the worst dancer and mm-hmm. the best dancer. So if you're in the middle, no one gives a crap. Okay? <laughs> they only look at the worst dancer. Yeah. So if people are looking at you while you're dancing, you're either a great dancer or you suck. Okay? <laughs> That's just really weird. We're coming to the top of our time. Let's talk about Clover Park. Yes. Mm-hmm. We are in Clover Park in. See, we're in Clover Park in Port St. Lucie, uh, the 1st to the 4th, and we have shows every night. You can go uh, come and see us, uh, and be sure to come out 40 minutes before the show to see the pre-show, which starts in front of the tent. Then we're going to West Palm Beach for 10 days. We're going to be at the Palm Beach Kennel Club, uh, so at least Ryan and I'll have a nice kennel to sleep in at night. Mm-hmm. We're going to be at the well, Kennel Club yep. <laughs> that we deserve, and a milk bone. I hope my boss is watching. We'll be at the Kennel Club uh, July 8th through the 18th. And come on out and have fun with us. Yes. That's what we want. That's the come on out and have thing. a good time. Enjoy the show. Don't enjoy the show. Talk to us about it. We'll talk to you back about it. I got to tell you. We're lonely people. <laughs> I've had 40,000 interviews plus in my days in the industry. And this is the worst. <laughs> and, and I'm always blessed to have a good interview where I could be an idiot. Okay? <laughs> because I'm not alone. <laughs> Which works makes it work. So now we're Thank like, the, you. like does the three <laughs> We're like the Borg of idiots. <laughs> yeah. We've assimilated you. Yeah. <laughs> With that everybody have a great day. Come out and see them. It's gonna have a great time. That's the Cirque product for you. Go to CircAlcatraz.com for more info. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay.